key point that he's trying to make is that there's two groups of people and you need to turn away from one of them. Now, you could just assume, I know I said this last week, that he's talking about people not in the camp. Oh, I'm sure that's part of it, but no. We know that the wheat and the tares grow together in the camp. And so he's referring to things that happened in the camp. Did Messiah warn that false teachers were already among them? Did Paul warn of it? Did all the other apostles warn of it? Oh, I mean, people inside the camp are being a problem. And the camp is being confused as he, that's a big problem with Galatians, right? The camp was getting confused and starting to go in a direction that Paul had never told them to go. And they weren't going in a direction completely outside. They were going to a direction that was kind of sort of like, but a little bit different. Don't worry about people coming in the camp and doing foolish things. Don't worry about them leading people astray. Some people come to me all the time. I shouldn't say some people. People do on a regular basis come to me on a, on a, and, and share things like, oh, do you know what so-and-so is saying and doing and this and that? And people are listening to them and they may, they may go in a different direction. That's normal. It's a filter. Yahweh allows Hasatan and others to filter. You know, when you're, when you're doing grain, they run it through a sifter. And so I don't worry about people coming in the camp that are going to, you know, be wolves in sheep's clothing and steal from the flock or start their own thing. We got a bunch of people out there right now that used to be here that are all starting their own things. And you're welcome to go. It's a filter. And imposters. What's an imposter? Something that looks sort of like and is representing itself to be something that it's not. Yes or no? Simple, right? Evil men and imposters show, shall go on to the worse, leading astray and being led astray in the camp. Can we all agree he's talking about in the camp? He's telling Timothy, you as a leader in the camp are going to see these things happening in the camp. You need to know about it. Oh, but Rabbi, we don't like the way you talk about that group over here and this group over here. Have you seen what they're doing? Does it look like imposters to you? Oh, I don't like the way you're talking about them. You judge for yourself. In other words, we should all be on the same page. So don't you tell me and don't listen to these other ministries out there saying that somehow we're not supposed to be on the same page. That is garbage. I know it's a struggle to get to the same page because you all want to just hold on to my, my emotional investment in my idea, you know, so I have to hold on to it. But that's garbage. It's scripturally wrong. Period. That's what it says here. You are to come into fullness of the unity, these fivefold are to help you get there to the fullness of unity, right? The perfecting the set of our ones until we come to the unity of belief so that we're not tossed about by teachings. So what beliefs are we talking about? The ones that have to do with teachings. And it takes an, a, a maturity, because he says we're not to be children anymore. Because children don't have the maturity and stability to be in unity of belief. What scriptures is he talking to Timothy about? The New Testament? Didn't exist yet. He says, all scripture is breathed by Elohim and profitable for teaching, reproof, setting straight for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Elohim might be fitted, equipped for every good work. So why is he referring now to scripture after all this false stuff? He's saying because they're going to at some point say things that don't line up and you're supposed to know better and catch it. Because it has to line up with the scripture. And, in, and, the, and now let's understand, we have different writings in your book. Scripture is Genesis through Malachi or Second Chronicles, the Old Testament. Okay, the Tanakh. I'm not diminishing the new. It has a di See, we're learning about labels, aren't we? Like evil is a label we didn't understand correctly. The New Testament isn't any less valuable than the Old Testament. It just is called by different phrasing, okay? Different label. What is reprove? Correct? Set straight? Okay? So when I tell you there's other stuff out there that you shouldn't be playing with, and it's fire, and it's dangerous, and it's going to hurt you. 
You could think I'm just being a cultist leader who wants everybody only to listen to me, or you could listen to it as reproof. Better yet, go look for yourself. And then when you go, ow, and you get burned, you'll know. Or if you don't get burned and you just fly right into it, well, you won't even know you're on fire. And it won't be the fire. Some of those places think that they've got that charismatic fire going. It's a whole different thing. He says, they will heap up for themselves. What does heap up? They're going to have an abundance of multiple, like a multiplicity of teachers. Do we not see that today? Absolutely, especially with the freedom of access that the internet gives you to a never ending flow of possible teachers on any subject. Because I've had people tell me, oh, I've got lots of teachers. I said, that's part of your problem. That's why you're confused. I don't care if you listen to lots of teachers. You need a teacher. You need one teacher because you're going to get confused at some point and need to go to that teacher and say, I'm confused. You know, there are places that I can promise you, absolutely, if you didn't care about the message, you would have more fun than you have here. Because that's all they want to do is have fun. They're going to have music that will have more fun and other things that are going, you will have more fun. Is that what you really want though, is more fun? Not that we don't have fun here, we do. I'm not saying that. I'm saying is, there are places, you, you, some of you went to charismatic and, and other Pentecostal places where, man, you, they, you, are, you went home sweating because you had so much fun, all right? Because you were rolling and dancing and screaming and running up the aisles and running around. I mean, you had fun. You cut loose like crazy. But is that sober-minded? Oh, but that was just our emotions. Yes, and you were chasing the emotion as opposed to the emotion being an expression of where you really are. Count it all joy. Why? Why would you think it's joyful? He says, because you should know that it proves your belief and it works endurance. So there's a good benefit to this. So you should be rejoicing when Abba gives you something that's going to develop your endurance and is going to work your belief. It's like, you know what? Going to the gym, while it can be enjoyable at times, is hard work. And it does cause pain and it does cause soreness. And all, but I'm joyful about it because I know it's building strength and endurance. There's a benefit to it, right? Okay? So that being said, he's saying the same thing. Your trials are building muscles of belief and endurance. All right? It's an endurance and belief workout. Messiah never, ever broke Torah or would ever have hinted that anybody ever should or would break Torah. Period. Yet, the Jesus representation is the representation of the law is done away with. That we're under grace now and not the law. Yeshua never says any such thing. He never acts in any manner that was like any such thing. And so this is an imposter. And if any place you go is embracing any level of this fraud, then you're in a bad place, aren't you? Oh no, but we just love each other and the fellowship's so good and, and yeah, we don't agree on everything, but oh my gosh. You're setting yourself up for the problems that you're going to face. I mean, this is, this is the quicksand that you're stepping into. <laughs> 